Paul, stay with us in the interview area. And uh, we're going to take an opening statement from Coach Marshall, and then we'll go to the uh, players. When they're done with the players, we'll dismiss them and go back to Coach. So, Craig? Well, we, uh, <clears throat> we're glad to be here. Um, you know, we, we feel like we're playing well. and uh, We know we have a tremendous challenge in front of us starting tomorrow evening with Dayton. And um, I've enjoyed coaching these guys tremendously all year. It's been a really fun season for us as we've watched this team blossom and mature and develop uh, right in front of our very eyes. So um, we're excited again with the opportunity. We're glad it warmed up a little bit today. It was pretty cold when we got in last night, but it's a beautiful day and we're ready to play. All right, questions for the, uh, for the players, please. Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Anyone, please, right here? Uh -huh. For Connor and Zach, uh, guess feel disrespected by the C. I mean, what was your reaction? I found that you were ten. Connor, um, we were a little bit surprised, but uh, we knew we were going to have to play good teams all tournament. So um, we're excited for the task at hand, and hopefully we can come out and play well. But like I said, we we knew we were going to have to play a good team every every round in this tournament. Zach, uh, like Connor said, we were surprised, but the committee they make the season everything for a reason. So. The only thing we could do is just come out and play and do what we do. Questions, please. We're going to. Questions? Yeah, Jerry. Uh, for Marcus, what, what, what do you think of Dayton? What challenges do you think they bring to you guys? Marcus? Um, Dayton's a great team, you know. Um, they push the ball well in transition, you know, and they're very athletic, you know. Um, they're in the A-10, a great, great conference, you know. They play a lot of great teams, a lot of tough teams. You know, we're just going to come up. We're going to have we're gonna have to come out and play tough in order to win. Right over here. Uh, Zach, for you, what have you seen in the development and growth of, of Shaquille Morris? You've been with him now for a while. How far has he come as a player? Question for Zach. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty amazing to see the transition from freshman year to all the way to the product you see now. Just his body, his mindset. Uh, I say his positioning has gotten a whole lot better, a whole lot more active on defense, uh, being more aggressive to the, towards the rim instead of fading, and really, really just being a monster in there. And that's. And what he's done is completely helped us out throughout this whole season. And to me, I'm very proud of him. Further questions <clears throat> for the players? We're done? OK, thanks, guys. You're dismissed. Thanks. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Question right here for Coach Marshall. Greg, what do you remember about John Brannon from the Marshall days, and did you have him pegged as a coach at that time? Uh, John Brannon, uh, very, very hard worker, number one. Um, he was the last guy to leave the gym. Tremendous uh, skills. He could shoot it and pass it. He had a quirky jump shot, and he'll laugh when I, he hears me say that, but it went in. And his fifth year after transferring, into Marshall, I was the I was the first year assistant coach, and he was an all conference player. He was an all tournament player in the Southern Conference. Our last year in the Southern Conference, and we came within a tip in at the buzzer of UT Chattanooga, a team that eventually went to the Sweet 16 of going to the NCAA tournament. Something Marshall has not done in a while, and. Uh, Coach D'Antoni got real close this year, playing in the championship game. I watched that game. I was pulling for him. But um, John Brandon was cerebral, Rhodes Scholar candidate um, as a graduate, and did not know he was going to get into coaching. I thought he would go into the corporate world and uh, be very successful there. But um, 
have followed his progress and his coaching career, and he obviously latched on with Anthony Grant, which was a great move at VCU and in Alabama. We've played against each other uh, several times uh, with high stakes and just really like John and his family. Got to know them as well. They're a wonderful family. He's a, obviously a fantastic young man and a great coach, and that program is now in its uh, first year eligible for the tournament, second year for him as a head coach, and here they are. Right, right here. Paul Sondrop, Wichita Eagle. Greg, uh, Archie Miller mentioned that he watched that Wichita State in the 2013 Final Four, and that provided a little bit of, you know, blueprint that a program like similar to yours can, you know, can play that way and get to those those places. How often do you hear that from uh, from other coaches? And and I guess that would be satisfying to hear that you've kind of provided that kind of a map for some of those schools. Well, I don't I don't hear that that often, but it was nice to hear that from him in our coaches meeting today. And and this is a guy who has has been inspirational in his own right. He he was uh, an inspiration to play in the ACC at North Carolina State as you know he's not the biggest guy in the world, but his his heart and his uh, talent uh, or supersede his his size and and now he's doing it on the coaching level so he's obviously been an inspiration to others as well uh, it's nice to hear him say that uh, that was a magical run and you know it was something that you know we followed up with the undefeated season and then a sweet 16 and then a couple of more wins in the tournament so it was the it was the impetus of what we're doing today and uh, Greg, Cal was just here and said that uh, the selection committee did the best job seeding he's seen in the last eight years. What do you think? Uh, you know, I'll defer to Cal on that. They, 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 they're probably more likely to talk to him about seeding and where he wants seeds to be than, than they'll, they, they would be to me. They, they don't call me. They don't ask me anything. And uh, they probably don't care that I, I disagree with the seedings. It's a great tournament. Uh, I'm kind of used to the the, the uh, short end of the stick, if you will, on the seedings. But uh, that being said, we, we usually wear the dark uniforms and we've won nine games in the last four years. So uh, as Connor mentioned, we're gonna play great teams in this tournament regardless of where they seed you. Uh, I've enjoyed watching the games uh, today and there's been some great games with lower seeds either coming close to winning or winning. And you know we know we've got a challenge tomorrow. This could the, the seeds could easily be flip-flop, but still you're playing a, a great team and a well-coached team and a, a team with veterans and seniors. So they've, they've had their success in the NCAA tournament as well. This should be a, a tremendous game, and then whoever wins gets the winner of Kentucky, Northern Kentucky. Right here. here we had two right here. Jerry, yeah. Jerry Tipton, Lexington Herald Leader. How big of a wave of momentum are you guys riding into the tournament? Uh, Jerry, I think we're, we're playing very well. Uh, I don't know how the, I guess, 11 days, maybe 12 days since we played on Sunday in our Valley Championship on CBS two Sundays ago. What's that going to be, 12 days now? Um, we've tried to keep them fresh mentally. We've tried to give their bodies some rest physically. Um, but in the end, uh, we haven't played anyone else for 12 days. So the layoff will... It'll be interesting to see how that affects us. Um, I'm not sure. Well, Dayton, Dayton's had some time off, too. They probably had uh, a week off. But the bottom line is uh, you've got, two, again, two good teams. And we feel like we were really starting to peak in, in late February, early March. Hopefully, we can carry that over into mid-March. Right here. Greg, you've obviously talked a lot about, you know, some of the scheduling challenges. Archie Miller's had similar problems. Power Five schools aren't lining up to play you guys. What, what's the solution? I mean, what should be done to make sure that, you know, we have more of those matchups in the non-conference season? It's a great question, Myron. I, I, think, um, I think you would almost have to mandate that these Power Five teams have to play X amount of games on the road. Um, you know, they've got the money with the, the TV and the, the bowl games and all of that to uh, do basically what they want. And if they never have to leave their building or go play anyone, um, it's gotten easier for us in the past four or five years. Um, for instance, this year we, we scheduled Oklahoma and we scheduled Oklahoma State. We're in the, 
the Bahamas tournament. Next year, we're in the Maui tournament, and we're going back to the Bahamas tournament in, th in four years. So we're playing the best that we can, but we would like a few more of those. Uh, I, 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 I sympathize. We play Tulsa home and home, St. Louis home and home. Those are regional rivals that generally are pretty good, but uh, a couple of them had bad years this year, and that's hard to, hard to predict when these schedules are made two and three years in advance. But um, we played Colorado State on the road, another good team. We want to play the best that we can. We try to, we try to go to the best exempt tournaments possible. Uh, we, we play the, the best Power 5 or BCS schools that will play us home and home, and we're continually looking at that. But I, something that we're, we're trying to work on extending the series with Oklahoma. Coach Kruger's been awesome. And maybe, maybe we can schedule something with Dayton. Maybe, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe we can schedule something with Butler. We, played in, we practiced in Hinkle Fieldhouse today. Uh, those are probably the answers. But I think the BCS Power 5 teams that don't have to go on the road and then, then they also have the opportunity for quality wins, but uh, many of them get a lot of quality losses as well. Right here. Bob Lutz, Wichita Eagle. You've been openly critical of Shaquille Morris during parts of his career at Wichita State. What do you think was the trigger that got him to play in a way that you're now fairly satisfied with? I would say I'm more than fairly satisfied. Um, you know, Shaq is one of those guys that kind of got away with some things in high school because of his immense size and strength. He was like the bully on the playground. And uh, it's, it's, it's not just the basketball court that we've had to push him, Bob. It's, it's uh, in academics as well. But I, I also uh, I want to clarify that uh, I've told him many times this year as he's made steps towards being the, the, the student and the player that he can be, how proud I am of him and, and, and his, his maturation process. Uh, he's, he's come a long way. And as a coach, uh, the, the, the way we try to do it, we try to develop the person, the student, and the player, he is a great shining example of a guy that's come a long way in all three of those categories. Right here. Every year your name comes up when there's coaching vacancies, and obviously that's kind of happening again this year. But I'm wondering, with those uh, frustrations or challenges with scheduling and seating, could that ever be a tipping point for you to go elsewhere? Or are those things you consider when you're getting offered? You know, um, n not really. Uh, I, first of all, um, I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. I have no one's talked to me or no one's talked to anybody that represents me. There's no, been no discussion of any of these jobs. In fact, I don't even know what jobs are open, to be honest. There's a lot of uh, action that takes place every day and every week, it seems. But um, we, we value um, the, the life that we lead and, and whether we're uh, taken care of. We've got a great administration at Wichita State. Uh, they've been very, very um, supportive and generous and kind to my family. And, you know, I've got um, not just me, but I've got my family and I've got my players. And, you know, we, we're, we think we've got something really good going. So I don't really worry about it. I think it's a, a very humbling to, to have your name mentioned with these jobs. And sometimes I listen and you know, ultimately, maybe I'll take one, but right now, we're very, very happy where we are. Uh, the city of Wichita is, is a, a wonderful place to live, and it's treated my family and, and a lot of people very, very well, and uh, we, we, we're, we're very content, but at the same time, uh, we don't bury our head in the sand. I've said that before, and we listen, and, and maybe, maybe there'll be a time for us to make a move, but I don't know when that's going to be. Right here. Going back to the scheduling uh, topic, at this point, I mean, the way that the, the committee has treated you guys a couple of years in a row, does it become something where you feel like maybe the Missouri Valley is being disrespected or you guys need to pursue other conference options? How, how do you think that that can be remedied with your on the league side of things? You know, I, I don't, that's beyond my decision making level. Uh, that's a presidential deal as far as conference affiliation. I just think there's a, there's a little bit of a movement, it seems, uh, by the committee to squeeze out the non-Power Five. 
I really feel that. I mean, and then uh, if, if they're going to allow a lot of these Power Five teams in, um, then they're going to place them against one another in the tournament. I mean, we're, go we're playing Dayton, Gonzaga played, who did they play? Um, who did Gonzaga play? VCU plays um, somebody. Winthrop played Butler. I mean, it's it's amazing. South Dakota State. South Dakota State. They want to they want to weed out the the non Power Fives as quickly as possible. It appears. And uh, when I left the room, it was uh, Middle Tennessee was up nine against uh, Minnesota, and you know, there's there's a there's a lot of quality basketball being played at some of these places and and I'll go a step further there's a lot of bad basketball being played at the power five leagues right here Greg can I get your reaction to Dave Stallworth's passing yeah I was gonna say something at the end if no one asked me about that Bob uh, perhaps and I didn't get a chance to see him play for the Shockers but I did get a chance to see him play for the Knicks uh, one of the greatest if not the greatest shockers of all time passed away last night Dave the rave Stallworth um, you know our, our sympathies go out to his family uh, he was a tremendous gentleman and a, and a true fan of the shockers in my first six or seven years uh, as the head coach he was he would be at games just about every game and as his, as his f health started to fail he was there less and less and we knew about his um, illness. We sent a card to him early in the week. And, you know, we'll be playing this tournament with a heavy heart because he was a true gentleman and a wonderful represent, representative of, of Wichita and Wichita State University. Right here, Jerry. Uh, Greg, you, you suggested about uh, weeding out the Power Five. And I'm wondering what is the incentive the to... The non-Power Five. I'm sorry. Yeah, big distinction. Uh, the non-Power Five, how much of that do you think is uh, wanting marquee teams, to more money-making possibilities uh, for TV and the TV contracts? That could be the case, uh, Jerry. I, I really don't know the, the answer to that question because I don't study the Nielsen ratings and all that. But to me, this tournament, you know, and obviously there are a lot of people that only know the top 10 or 15, 20 teams in the country. They only know the Kentuckys and the Dukes and the UCLAs. That's all they know. They don't know the Wichita States, the Middle Tennessees, the Daytons, or, and they, they kind of dismiss us, if you will. But when the tournament comes around, that's what makes the tournament so special. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna take anything away from uh, the wonderful game that Villanova and North Carolina played last year. I know I was on the edge of my seat. I really enjoyed watching it as a spectator. But, you know, I just don't think that weeding out the non-Power Fives is, is going to help the interest in those brackets and people that fill out the brackets and people that have interest in the underdog or the, the team that's supposed to uh, not win, that wins and makes it to the second weekend or the third weekend like Butler and VCU and we've done recently. Anything else for Coach? Sure. No worries. Just one thing about you, you mentioned about your team peaking or starting to peak late February and into March. What was, what did you see that told you, I mean, what's your approach to basketball as a team and what, what was working so well? Jerry, we've been able to score the basketball very well this year. We've got, we can strike you from all five spots on the floor. That has not been our problem. We've scored over 80 points 20 something times this year. Uh, we, we continue to get better defensively. Our numbers, our, our analytic numbers and whatnot continue to improve defensively as the, as the season went on. They weren't quite as good as last year, but last year was hard to improve upon. We were the single best defensive team in the country. So as we started to get better defensively, Shaq Morris got healthy from an, a midseason thigh injury, and I finally was smart enough to hand the ball to a freshman point guard, Landry Shamit. That took Connor Frankamp off the ball, and he could just concentrate on scoring. And those three things, I think, um, along with a couple of guys like Zach Brown and Richard Kelly accepting their roles on our team and becoming great defenders and energy givers. And um, it's, really, it's really been a, a really nice uh, experience for me as a coach 
to watch our team. It's almost been like time-lapse photography, watching a flower bloom. That's what it's been like to watch our team develop into a cohesive juggernaut, if you will. That's it? Thanks, Coach. See you Thank tomorrow. you. All right.